Hi everyone and welcome along to another Christmas themed watercolour painting project. Today we're going to be putting poinsettias into a lovely Christmas garland and we're going to be layering up really dilute colours to build up a lovely abundant wreath and then we can put in those bright poinsettias on top. So we're going to be looking at different dilutions of watercolour and also layering up that wet on wet to get a really nice blend of textures and colours. So grab your paints and let's get going. Okay, I'm really excited about creating this one because I really enjoyed painting in this sort of loose layered up style with my poppy painting project a few episodes back. So I'm just getting some colours together. I want a sort of greeny blue set of tones because we're going to put together some spruce and some pine which are bits of greenery that were painted in my winter watercolour greenery episode um, which is well worth a watch because it's the perfect starting place for anything uh, foliage based for Christmas painting projects. Okay so I've got some colours here so I've mixed in a little bit of green gold with sap green then I've got sap green with a bit of French ultramarine which is just a nice slightly piney version of a green and then I've got sap green mixed in with Prussian blue which is the ultimate greeny blue and it's just wonderful so those are my three main tones that I'm going to be using. I've got a size 2 brush and I'm going to start off really dilute and I'm going to paint a sort of curved garland with some poinsettias as our focal point. So let's start off first by building up these layers. So it's sometimes hard to start drawing a spruce or a pine and it's not look like a fern. So just be mindful of that when you are painting your needles. Have, like I said, have a look at the tutorial where I went through the different sort of techniques for this sort of slightly loose pine winter greenery approach. So this is really nice and dilute and I'm just doing a few overlaps but keeping it fairly simple. And now I'm also going to have a little bit of burnt sienna mixed in with a bluey green and I'm going to pop in a bit of a fir branch and it doesn't matter if it goes over because that's rather nice. We're just building up a shape at this point. And because we've got a fir, we can put a fir cone in as well. Now I've done a very detailed fir cone tutorial but right now I'm going to show you how to do a lovely simple one as well because that's the beauty of watercolour. Um, it is so diverse as a medium. You could be really into detail and wanting to do really like um, close-up botanical studies and spend lots of time on a piece and watercolour would be perfect for it or you can be really into loose watercolour a little bit more like this and it just does the job really nicely as well and what's quite cool is you'll see here that that spruce from the first bit we painted has dried really quite quickly so the fur needles that I'm doing over the top here are layering over really nicely as well as that nice bit of blend we had so let's try a little fir cone, shall we? I'm going to pop one in here. So I'm just creating the shape with a series of dashes. And my goodness, it's as simple as that. We just want a little bit of unpainted space. And I will put in a fraction of Prussian blue in the bottom. Let's do another one here, do that again for you. Um, should I put one in, put 
one in there. Okay, so a cup at the bottom and then build up the shape. And there you go, it's as simple as that. Just a few wet dabs of colour making sure that you leave some space in between. And then the other thing, this Christmas garland would not be complete without some berries, so let's get some of those in as well. So we've just got a few S and C curves, and now, just to brighten things up a bit, I'm gonna get in some cadmium yellow, mixed with a little bit of a ready orange mix, and I'm going to place in a few berries and I'm painting these using the belly of the brush and then curling round and you'll see that the little unpainted space makes a little bit of shine on the berry and you don't have to have a, um, a branch for every berry you can just sort of add in a few wherever you fancy really. Okay, lovely. This is looking really nice. So we're gonna start curling down with another bit. So our poinsettias are gonna sort of go there. Apologies, that's my printer suddenly popping up to say hello if any of you heard a sort of clunking mechanical <laughs> beast in the corner. My very hard working printer probably could do with a break. Right, so although we've got a curving thing like this, it's very important, especially with a nice wild, organic feeling wreath that we have wild sort of tendrils creeping off in all directions. So hence why I've just done a little bit of spruce coming out there. And I'm also going to do a little bit and just poking out there as well. And just be so careful to not overload your brush with too much colour. It's really important that we keep these nice and dilute at this point. It might even be hard to see what I'm actually painting, it might be so faint, but that's good because we need our poinsettias to have a fighting chance to actually show up. Okay, so the curve's gonna come down here, so I'm going to do another bit of pine there. This might be a rather nice um, Christmas gift idea, actually painting a nice Christmassy garland for someone and then maybe writing something in the middle of it, writing their name or a Christmas message. That could be really nice. Just dropping in a little bit of colour in there. Right, let's get a little bit of uh, fur in, I think. So I'm going to come down And we'll have another bit there as well. And it's amazing how so far I haven't actually changed brushes at all. It's all been done with this size 2 brush, which is very cool. I love being able to paint with as few brushes as possible. I don't like having to keep on changing up the brushes. Um, so if you can really get the full potential out of the bristles um, and if you're not quite sure how to get these fine lines as well as the really thick lines, um, go and have a play around in my watercolour for beginners uh, playlist because there is a whole bit about the thickest and thinnest brush strokes that you could possibly manage with one of these larger brushes. Let's pop in another pine cone, shall we?
So we do the base and then we start filling up the shape. Lovely. Okay, I think we'll do a few more berries and then I think it's time to get our poinsettias involved. Now the beauty of this is we can always come back and add in extra bits and pieces um, after we've done our poinsettias and uh, just keep layering up and so that's another reason why we do a nice dilute beginning. Right, a poinsettia is a uh, flower extremely associated with Christmas. Um, it's hard to well, I don't know if I see it any other time of year, is it? Because it's a seasonal Christmas flower. But it's bright red, it's very cheerful. It's funny, it almost looks synthetic because it is so bright. Um, but I have got here a little mix of some Prussian blue. Here we go. Prussian blue, cadmium red. And it makes an amazing burgundy colour which we're going to want, but we also want cadmium red in its true form. So I have painted a lot of these this morning to make sure I've got my favourite way of painting a poinsettia. And here we go. So this is a loose approach to the flower. It's going to have five petals, which I'm going to paint with two mirrored S curves and quite purposefully going to sort of leave the centres a little bit empty and just fill in with a few brush strokes. Now the next flower needs to butt up against that first petal. Get a little bit more. There we go. That's quite an important thing that your petals, they point at the end but they are really quite broad when they come down in and they need to meet the neighbouring petal. Another one. And last one. Beautiful. And the nice thing about this is even when it feels a little bit wonky, a little bit strange, um, it's all going to look really nice shortly. So I'm going to do a few more of this one. I'm just going to do some slightly smaller ones. And we're going to pop one in here. So let's get those petals really close up to each other. Lovely, bright, strong cadmium red. No worries if they overlap. Leave that one like that. And then I think I'm gonna have maybe a little one. We'll have a bit more foliage, I think. That might be all right for our poinsettias, actually, if we get a few berries in there. I think I'm gonna leave it at two, which is quite odd because normally you would never do things in, odd, in even numbers, but I actually really like how it's looking. 
we can always change our mind. So I just need that to dry a little bit. So in the meantime, I'm gonna get some even stronger, darker Prussian blue and sap green mix here. And what I wanna do is I want to add in a few poinsettia leaves, which are just gonna cut through a lot of the rather delicate colours we've got. Okay, lovely. That's looking really, really nice. Now we just need to let things dry a little bit and then we will return to do the next details. So we've got things drying a little bit and now it's time to add the first little hint of this darker color. So. Things are still a little damp, which is great, but they're not quite so wet as they were. So we just want to get a little bit of that darkness in. And then I'm going to add a little bit of red to that, just to get the colour a little lighter. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in the second layer of petals. Now, quite often when I'm doing loose watercolour flowers, I would do layers and build up and up and up. But this one I found actually I preferred to put in the lower layer of petals second. So what I'm doing is I'm mentally drawing my eye from the centre of the flower out to the tip of that petal. And I'm just placing it in there. So again, draw the eye. And it's absolutely fine if that colour starts to blend in. In fact, it's quite a good thing. This is with a large brush, with a size six, because we want that broad brush stroke that's able to create the shape in sort of quite minimal amount of brush strokes. Okay, draw the line. There we go, lovely. I like just a little bit of unpainted space when doing these. Okay, let's do the little one. There we are. You can even do a little dot if you wanted and do the outline and colour it in. Or a little line like that. Here we're just going to get a little bit gonna go underneath and then down here lovely really happy with that so we want to let these dry now a bit more so we can add in the rest of our foliage around the edge and this is the point whenever we're painting a wreath or any type of garland you put in your focal flowers and you've put in your, your foliage, but then it's all about filling it out and evening up the shape. Just remember that your poinsettias are still a little wet, so don't disturb them too much, but I do quite like getting a little bit of colour blended out of them. It's kind of fun.
Now you could put something like this into a full wreath shape, so a full circle. I quite like a garland as well. Let's have a little pine cone peeping out. So we're very nearly there, we're just going to add the last few bits of detail and then we can get our poinsettias finished off. So I'm just adding a few leaf lines, very very simple ones. And I think we could just do with a berry or two up there. Maybe there too. It's hard to stop sometimes. Right, let's get these poinsettias finished off, shall we? So the last few details are with this darker colour. So I need to make sure I've got it nice and strong. So I just mix in an extra bit of pigment just to make sure I have a slightly more concentrated version. And what I am going to do is I am going to go with a thin brush and just use the second layer of petals to just get a little bit more detail in the middle. And you can see it's still a little wet, which is great because it means we can still do a little bit of blending. So now some color out from the middle. And then the centre of a poinsettia is quite light and bright with a little bit of greeny yellow. So I've got some lemon yellow mixed with sap green here. And I know that it's not going to stand a chance against yeah, a little bit more green there. It's not going to stand a chance against all that dark red, but it doesn't matter really because all we want to do is dab a few dots in there. and just let it do its thing. And there we have a lovely loose poinsettia garland. Thanks so much for watching. I want to say a big thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel because your support enables me to create these videos that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you're getting on. And also I'd love to know the kind of things that you want to see being painted in these tutorials. Um, so hit the subscribe button to make sure you never miss another video. Until next time, bye.